So if you're doing a quantitative study um, and um, you've collected data from questionnaire, you're going to have to choose your statistical test. Now, this is the thing that students often get really stuck on and really struggle with. And so I'm going to just do a little bit of recapping of this and then give you some ideas as to how to, to get on with this stage. So in one of my previous recordings, I had, had this slide and it talks about how you choose your statistical tests. So it depends on the nature of the data, so the number of variables you want to look at. Now, as I say, if you're really um, quite a novice to this area, then I would do nothing more than compare two variables. That's plenty for your dissertation. But um, if you've um, done um, statistics before, you might want to look at tests that compare more than two variables. Most of you are only going to be looking at comparing two variables at a time. And then you need to know whether your data is nominal, ordinal or scale. And go back to one of my first lectures, uh, recordings on um, quantitative analysis, and that will explain those different kinds of data, because you need to know that. Then you need to think about your sample characteristics. So, you know, if you're comparing groups, how many people are in those groups? How many different groups have you got? So if you've got age categories, how many different age categories have you got? Have you got two age categories? Maybe you're comparing people under 30 and people over 30. Or have you got six age categories? Is it broken down into 18 to 24, 25 to 34, etc.? cetera? Um, you know, because that will tell you the number of groups. And then the sample type. Most of you are going to be have independent samples, but some of you might have paired samples where you've got before and after studies or two different conditions where people have been asked the same questions. Um, and then it's what is your hypothesis or research question, and more on that in a moment. And then I've showed you before, there are these tables in books, and you can kind of go and look up depending on what your question is. So if you want to see if two groups are different, so for instance, I want to compare whether men and women have a different mode of transport. That's an are two groups different question. So once you write out your questions, it will give you an idea of what... Um, what you're asking and therefore you can then begin to look at the different tests. So one thing that I will talk about with you um, in one of the um, uh, online sessions where we're face to face is how you can actually link your um, research objectives through your questionnaire to your analysis strategy. Okay so Let's imagine you've got this research objective to compare age cohort motivation to attend outdoor music festivals. So that would have taken you through the design process that you know you need to ask a question there about their age because you need to know how old they are. You also, in order to address that research objective, you need to know about their motivations to attend outdoor events. So you've got another question, question 12 there in your questionnaire, which rates the importance of the following items in your decision to attend. And these all relate to motivations. So it might be socialised with a friend, the band lineup, meeting new people. You might have a whole load of other things which are related to motivations, which you've probably captured from your literature review and probably from other studies. OK, so you've got your questions there. Um, and, you know, I, I always tell people when they're thinking about their questions, explain why they've designed them in that way. So, you know, in terms of age, you've captured this in cap categories. OK, of four age groups, and you've put this at the end of the questionnaire because you don't want to put people off answering the questionnaire by putting it at the start. And then in terms of your question 12 on motivations, you've used the balanced five point rating scale, which goes from strongly agree to strongly disagree. And this has generated ordinal data and it enables you to make these comparisons between the four age groups. So if I was um, going to analyse this data, first of all, if we look at that last column now, I would present some frequencies. One, first of all, I'd want to know, well, how many people have I got in these four age groups? Because if I've got hardly any in one of my four age groups, I might want to exclude them from the analysis or put them together with one of the other age groups. So, for example, say you've not got many people in your final age category, which is 60 plus, you might want to compare them with the age, another age category you have, say, maybe those people aged 40 to 50. Um, you know, um, because there's no point doing some analysis if you've only got two people in one of your age groups. Um, and also I'd report frequencies of the spread of motivation. So I'd want to know, well, yeah, let's have a look, you know, how many people are motivated by socialising with friends? 
Okay, I'm not going to do any comparisons at this stage. I just want to know, yeah, just how motivated are people by socialising with friends, the band lineup? Do some percentages. Then you want to do the comparison. You want to compare age with the motivation. And here, because you've got four age groups, the Cruska Wallace test would be a really good statistical test to use. So you need to work that all through. Now, when I design studies, I work this through at the start. I don't collect my data and then kind of go, oh, wow, I've got to analyse it now. That's a bit unexpected. I know I've got to analyse it, so I design it with the analysis in mind. And it helps you think through some of the considerations. So do try to plan this up front. But if you haven't, you can kind of go through retrospectively and actually work out what that analysis strategy will be now. So I hope that's that's helped and given you some insight there. But certainly you know, the data analysis strategy, you will need to go to your supervisor with um, some of your materials and your mapping of this and talk it through with them.